It's the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland, the largest building materials company of cement and construction material products on the West Coast. Now, here's Chris Sylvester, the voice of the Mustangs. And so we welcome you to another edition of the Cal Poly Mustang Insider powered by Cal Portland, Cal Poly baseball, spring sports around Cal Poly in full swing. Baseball opened up the conference schedule with three victories this past weekend over CSUN at home. Kind of a chance for these guys to hit the reset button and the new season, so to speak. Cal Poly is off to an undefeated start. A big part of the early success is a new name, freshman out of Folsom, Ryan Stafford, Cal Poly's leadoff hitter, starting catcher, is our guest this week on Mustang Insider. Hey, man, thanks so much for taking some time to chat with us. I know it's your spring break, but that doesn't mean much when you play a spring sport because you guys are right into the thick of it in between conference weekends. You guys are getting ready to hit the road and face Cal up in Berkeley tomorrow. But, I mean, coming off of this sweep, you guys have been struggling before the CSUN series. What changed from losing the final two games against Harvard and, and then turning around, coming back in the eighth inning Friday night, and, and you never trailed after that in the series against CSUN? Yeah, no, thank you for having me, first of all. But um, it was a talk that we had as a team where we kind of came together and said, whatever happened is behind us. we got to move forward and get to this next series. So I think when we were out there this weekend, we had a completely different vibe as a team. Even when we were behind in that first game, we didn't feel like we were out of it. So to make that comeback, I think that was a huge reset for us to show that we were able to win those late games and then just carry that momentum through the series. Yeah, it was 4-1 CSUN going into the home half of the eighth inning on Friday night. You led off the inning, and you worked the walk against the starting pitcher that you saw for a fourth time. You always wonder and you hope that, you know, second, third time around the order, you figure out a guy a little bit more, you get a better feel for what he's throwing, the arm angle, what it looks like. Blake Soderston was dealing for CSUN, and, and, you know, obviously Drew Thorpe made just one mistake, but it was costly with the bases loaded early in that game. Uh, he pitched well enough where he didn't deserve to lose that game. And so you guys were able to get him off the hook with the five runs uh, coming back to win that game in the eighth inning. But what was your mindset going into that plate appearance, knowing that, hey, you've got Brooks and, and Big Joe and Tate Samuelson behind you, guys that are capable of helping erase that deficit? Yeah, well, first of all, when he was going out there to pitch in that last inning, it's like 100 plus pitches. So we knew, like, obviously, he's getting a little tired. I've not seen him, but. For me, it's just setting the table for those guys, getting on getting on base and letting them do the work for me. So I just went up there trying to see some pitches, and he made it easy for me. I think it was a five-pitch walk, so I just saw those balls up and took my bag and let them do the work. Ryan Stafford, freshman catcher out of Folsom with Cal Poly Baseball, off to a great start. I mean, a, a seamless transition, and I mean that in all sincerity. I mean, you're hitting 329 here to start, and, and I'd imagine you get a good pitch selection – uh, ahead of Brooks Lee and, and a lot of fastball. So you're, you're sitting dead red a lot of the time. But uh, take me through the journey that ha has been here since you got to Cal Poly in the fall, enrolled, started playing with the guys. You know, at what point did you kind of know that you were going to be an everyday starter? And at what point did you know you were going to be hitting in front of perhaps the, the best hitter in college baseball? Yeah, it was a rough start when I got here at first, made a few adjustments to the swing and I was really struggling. So getting adjusted to everything and kind of working my way into getting back to who I am as a hitter, it took a little bit of time. But once we got through fall a little bit, I started hitting really well. And then I think when I knew that might be the case, we were at Santa Barbara and we show up there and I, uh, for our fall scrimmage. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be like starting, playing, what was going to be the case. But sure enough, look at the lineup and I'm hitting lead off and playing left field. So I think that's kind of when it all clicked that that could be my role. And then uh, fall closing meetings they told me that's where they want me hitting in front of Brooks so after that I kind of just understood what my role is going to be and kind of took that yeah you mentioned left field so you play a little bit of outfield as well but we've seen you primarily at catcher um, high school where did you play where did you like to play and explain the art of being a catcher at this level yeah. In high school, I considered myself a CEO. I didn't even leave any. I was a catcher only. I think I played two innings of infield and that was the last two innings of the last game of my high school career. So, um, yeah, I didn't really move too much besides that. Uh, it's a whole different ball game here. The, the standards are so much higher behind the plate. There's a, like um, 
like you read a uh, communication. They have to talk a lot more with the coaches, the pitchers, and the connection with those guys is really important. So I'm um, just keeping on top of everything I do, blocking. Uh, guys are stealing bags. There's a lot of action going on with these offenses. So it's really just got to stay on your game mentally a lot more than before, for sure. Folsom High School graduate, that's up north near Sacramento. For those that don't yeah. know, you had a great high school career. Obviously, your junior season got cut short, as did everybody's in 2020. But at 458, a couple mm -hmm. home runs, batted home 19, all Sierra Foothill League honors, uh, 13 multi-hit games. You guys uh, went 13 and 11, had a tie, went to the Division One playoffs your, your senior year of high school. When did Cal Poly first get in touch with you? What other schools recruited you? And what ultimately led you to become a Mustang? Uh, I was actually really early. I got in contact with this school my sophomore year in the fall. I went to a camp down here. Um, at the time, I wasn't talking to any other schools, just one. And it was just uh, Xavier from up north, I believe. But uh, once they gave me this offer, I came down, checked out the area. And it's just, I fell in love with it right away. And the coaching staff's amazing. They develop players so well. So it was everything I could have asked for. And then to commit early, take the stress off of recruiting, all that stuff was great for me. So I was blessed to have this opportunity as early as I did. What other sports did you play growing up? And at what point in your early life did you figure out, hey, this baseball thing, I'm pretty good at it. I want to get better. I want to play at the next level. Yeah, I'm in a baseball family. My dad played at Cal when he was, back in the day. And then my older brothers both played. So I kind of took in their footsteps in a way. And it was just meant to be, I would say, but um, played a little bit of soccer, basketball, and I wrestled in middle school, just try to keep it versatile and stay athletic. But once I got into high school, I turned my focus to baseball. Well, so your father played at Cal. You guys have a couple games at Cal, including a midweek tomorrow as you step out of Big West play for a night. How special will that be uh, to, to play up in Berkeley where your father played? It's going to be awesome. Uh, a lot of history there. And I grew up a Cal fan going to watch games there. And then I have a lot of family in the Bay Area that are all going to make the trip to see it. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be cool. Yeah, it definitely adds a little bit of spice to a, a midweek game. I know the focus yeah. is definitely winning a Big West title. That's the easiest way, right, to get uh, back to the postseason. And I, I know those are the expectations for this program. You have Brooks Lee and what's probably his final college season, Drew Thorpe. You could say the same thing for him. I mean, those guys are rising up the, the draft boards, at least the projections here, the first month plus of the college baseball season. Uh, how have you guys been able to kind of take each game by game, each series by series with the expectation of, hey, we want to be playing in a regional at the end of the regular season? Yeah, that's been the goal for all of us since like fall. That's when we started talking about it. So I think we're really just trying to take that. And then now that we're working into conference play, I think that's our route is to win conference. So just to get off to a great start there, um, I think that's going to be important, obviously. And then, yeah, no, we just had to flip the, turn the page and get our minds focused on what was important at the time. So that's what we did this weekend. Much has been made here in the first five, 10 minutes with you about, you know, <laughs> your, your previous history playing at Folsom, coming here to Cal Poly, hitting out of the leadoff spot. but as a catcher, uh, you, I'd imagine, have a pretty close relationship with a lot of the pitchers on the staff here at Cal Poly. And, uh, you know, Weston's the Saturday guy, Thorpe's the Friday guy. Sunday, you had a staff day yesterday. Everybody pitched pretty well, which was great yeah. to see and great for everybody's confidence moving forward. If you do need another staff day in a conference Sunday in the future, what, what's it like getting uh, those relationships on the right page uh, here in your freshman year, your first year at Cal Poly? And uh, the, the luxury of catching guys like Drew Thorpe, who has experience at this level, Travis Weston, he, he's been in college five years now, uh, four different stops. Yeah, uh, the, the connections are great. Uh, I'd say catching guys like Drew and Travis and Lobos, Kyle, they make me better myself. And um, those guys are actually pushing me to step up and take in a leadership role. And just to know that I don't have to act like a freshman. I'm not saying I do. They're just saying like, I can take the initiative to get on them for making bad pitches and stuff like that. And so having those relationships really helps having the pitcher catcher connection. It's, it's a huge thing that leads to a lot of success, definitely pitching. So I think growing those relationships has been really cool, especially with guys like Drew that are just so talented. So that's helped me a lot as a player myself as well. Ryan Stafford, freshman catcher of the Cal Poly Mustangs is our guest on Mustang Insider hitting 329. Great start here 
uh, through the first 19 games of this 2022 season. You're kind of a new school catcher, at least that's how I would refer to it as, because you're not slow. I mean, you're, you're not a guaranteed out if you hit a slow dribbler on the infield like a lot of catchers would be. And maybe that's just kind of a new era that we're breaking into in baseball where a catcher is hitting leadoff, a catcher is a, a threat to, to run on the base paths. Uh, did you have an idol or a favorite catcher growing up that you tried to maybe mold your game after a little bit? Um, I'm a Giants fan, so I grew up watching Buster Posey. He's always been my idol, a great guy to look up to. And I wouldn't say I model my game after him necessarily, but I try to be like him in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, he was a very athletic catcher for a number of years. <laughs> yeah. And um, even into his last season, I think it was kind of a, a surprise coming off the year that he had last year that he would announce his retirement. But I think you guys with Joey Bart, you, you guys will be OK here in the future. A, a lot of other catchers that maybe you can learn a thing or two from. Uh, let's talk about the team. Let's talk about this season so far. I, I know it was disappointing to lose that opening series to Washington, but then you bounce back against Missouri State. It feels like the bullpen is is getting a little bit better here as, as the season has gone along, preserving those leads, ensuring that you guys hold on. I mean, a uh, testament to that is uh, never trailing the, the final two games of the CSUN series. Uh, how far have these guys come in a short time? Because it just it looked like a different team in a really good way this past weekend. Yeah. Um, trying to figure out how to answer that. I think it's a lot of just getting the experience, but you also have to give a lot of credit to our Friday, like Drew Thorpe going a solid nine innings last week to save the bullpen for the next few days. And then what do you go seven on Friday? Yeah. Seven. Then, yeah. yeah. We only brought in two relievers. So we're saving our bullpen, keeping them fresh for when it really matters and later in the series. So I think that's been a huge part. And then, also, the coaching staff has been great working with guys and uh, making their deficiencies better. So that way, when they get out there, they don't, they don't have like a weakness, you know, so a lot of our guys have come a long way since the start of the year and it's helping us a lot. Yeah, you definitely seem wise beyond your years uh, on and off the field. But ha have there been some guys here in your first season at Cal Poly that you've looked up to or tried to get some tidbits from? whether it be against a pitcher that maybe they've seen the last couple of years in the conference or maybe just how to, you know, conduct yourself at, at practice under Larry Lee and, and how to go about life as a, a student in San Luis Obispo. Yeah. I've learned so much from a lot of these older guys and they're also helpful bringing you freshmen in. They're not like your typical like, hit on the freshmen, all that kind of stuff. They've been really helpful to me. And a few guys I could point out would be uh, Brooks, especially like, I want to model my game after him. He's so talented in a lot of ways. So learning his habits and what he does to be successful has been really cool. And then Tate, fifth year, he's been really cool to me as well. We like to hang out, play some poker from time to time. Uh, no money, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks uh, for specifying. <laughs> yes, yes. No, we just play for fun. And then Coach Lee is just a walking encyclopedia with baseball. So I've learned so much from him and how to act and how to carry myself as a player and as a person. So you got Cal tomorrow, then UC San Diego. Following that, you'll step aside from the Big West, play five or six non-conference games in a row before uh, Long Beach State, the preseason favorite in the Big West, comes to town. What does this team need to do to keep their winning ways in the conference season here coming up? I think we're just finding what's working right now. And um, our motto right now is going hunting because – we're not we're nobodies in a way so we're going after other teams so we're going after Long Beach and um, I think if we keep that mentality and we keep going with what's working right now we're, we're going to be successful this year well you're hunting now but soon to be the hunted if you guys keep putting stuff in the That's wind the goal, hopefully we'll all right <laughs> good stuff Ryan Stafford freshman out of Folsom hey thanks so much for your time Good luck this week. We'll see you in Berkeley and La Jolla here coming up and uh, we wish you continued success. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Cal Poly baseball off to a three and zero start in the big West season. If you're worried about rising PG and E rates, go solar pay less on your monthly bills, seamless installs, custom financing solutions. The experts at AM sun solar do it all. Visit amsunsolar.com. Your local solar experts also have to thank our friends at dignity health, Podcast brought to you by Dignity Health, offering all-star treatment you can trust. Learn more about their healthcare services. Visit dignityhealth.org slash Central Coast. Uh, special thanks to Ryan Stafford of Cal Poly Baseball joining us this week. Stay locked. GoPoly.com. The Varsity app will have more content coming your way soon. 
This has been the Mustang Insider powered by Cal Portland from Learfield. This has been the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland with a commitment to environmental leadership that has made the organization stronger and is the primary choice of contractors. The Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield's presentation on the Cal Poly Sports Network.